Taking a prescription drug to manage pain comes with some risk. We hear about prescription drugs use, use leading to serious addiction, and now some new research is giving us insight into just how quickly that addiction can take hold. I want you to look at what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention discovered when it comes to opioids. They found the rate of long-term opioid use increased by about 13% for patients who took opioids for eight days or more. And they also found opioid prescriptions have nearly quadrupled since 1999, even though there has been no overall change in reported pain levels in response. The CDC says doctors should try and prescribe painkillers for less than seven days, and if possible, just three days. We had a lot of questions about this, and we thought you might too. So Dr. Rick Bowles is here to walk us through this research. Thank you. Are doctors overprescribing medications like opioids? You know, personally, I, I don't think so. I think at least the group I work with, we're very, very conservative. Um, I went through right before I came, actually, and kind of talked to a lot of my colleagues, and we're all pretty much on the same boat. Uh, I'm sure there are some outliers out there, but we're pretty conservative. So are you surprised by those numbers in the research that that um, bleeds out? Not really. Um, I mean, I think if you go back quite a few years when this thing was being studied, there probably was a lot more being given out. Um, you know, as, as we've talked before, you know, we've, as doctors, we've been told for a long time that we were not prescribing enough and we didn't care about their pain. So there was this period of time where there's a lot more given out. Mm -hmm. And now they realize, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, this is not such a great idea. And so everybody's kind of backed off a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we see some concerns. I want to go through some numbers here. So prescription opioids like oxycodone and hydrocodone were involved in 24% of all overdoses in 2015. So, you know, although you're saying you're not seeing it in your office, those are concerning numbers. Is there a standard for prescriptions that those in the medical right. community talk about when prescribing drugs? Yeah, we talk about it really almost every week. Um, there is kind of a standard, and the standard is, you know, look at your patient. Uh, you got everybody's different, uh, their age, what they do, um, and can they be managed without narcotics? And you might say at first, well, that's kind of silly. I was a doctor in a small town in Oregon, only doc in town. I had a guy come in, lumberjack, had a kidney stone, worst pain you can ever have. And you have to take into account, okay, I could give him narcotics, but he's got to drive home, you know, um, because stones are mediated by prostaglandins. We gave him like a big dose of Motrin. That guy hopped off the table, was happy as a clam, no narcotics, he could drive home. So I'm just saying, you gotta take the whole thing, you know, the patient's age. Um, so we try to use non-narcotics first, and there's a whole host of things we can use. And again, it depends on the patient, their job, everything. Well, how concerned should patients be when they go in with an issue, maybe it's chronic pain, maybe they've had an injury, about accepting a medication or a prescription for one of these opioids, oxycodone or hydrocodone? Yeah, I mean, they, firstly, hopefully you have a good relationship with your doctor and you trust them, but there are some warnings you gotta be careful about, both the doctor and the patient. So if you start combining those kind of drugs with things like Valium, benzodiazepines, uh, Xanax, uh, throw in somebody who's Which got... Which you need prescriptions right, for, Right, you correct? need prescriptions. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them, I have patients who buy tons of Xanax off the street um, and go through withdrawal just on that alone. But now you combine the narcotics in there, mm -hmm. um, you combine that, or if they have bad emphysema or sleep apnea, you start combining those issues, boy, you're just creating a, a mess. They stop breathing, basically. So what are some questions, we talked, tease this in the break, that patients should be asking of their doctors before you accept a medication, walking through some of the pain that they're trying to manage so that that relationship is strong so that you can trust that they're not going to misuse the drug and vice versa. That's a tough one. Um, we face that every day. You know, you want to make sure you're listening to the patient and that on the other hand, it's hard for us as doctors to be honest with you to know, is this real or not? You know, um, as we've talked before, um, in the year 2000, they came up with a pain scale and, um, you know, we, we, you can rank those things, but it's all so subjective. And I think for a patient, they need to be honest, tell us what the actual issue is. Uh, have they tried everything else besides narcotics? Mm -hmm. um, and even ask the doc, okay, I've tried this, and what, what are my other non-narcotic options before we jump to that? There obviously are a lot of risks involved. Before I let you go, you brought this up just a moment ago, talking about uh, over the course of time, the discussions that are happening in the medical community about prescribing drugs. Maybe it's an antibiotic for a cold or for something like that, or something more strong for chronic pain. Um, how 
do you weigh the balance? And over history, how has this discussion gone in over or under prescribing medications? And where are we at right now on the scale? So this is a fascinating subject. So I've been in practice a long time, and I've seen the whole swing. So early on, around 1990, there were some articles published, not very good ones, that said, oh, doctors are horrible. They're not listening to their pain. They're not treating the pain. So in the year 2000, JACO, the Joint Commission, big, powerful group, came up with all these guidelines saying, docs, you're, not, you're doing a horrible job. You need to get more narcotics. You need to listen to their pain. And that's when, in the year 2000, they came up with all the pain rating scale, the smiley faces, the 1 to 10 score, and wanted that all, that all had to be used. You had to make sure and treat the pain. So then I think what happened after the year 2000, there was an increased amount of narcotics being used. And now... They look back and say, oh, those studies we looked at, they weren't very good. We've been over-prescribing now. So now you say we're under-prescribing, and the important takeaway from all of this is have that conversation right. with your doctor. You need to establish that and Make trust. sure you tell them about your risk factors, asthma, emphysema, sleep apnea, or are you using a benzo, Valium, sleeping drug of some sort that you're not telling them about? Yeah, Dr. Bowles, thank you for being Welcome. here. Important information. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Matt.